Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got an update today on the next generation television standard called ATSC 3.0. This is how people will be receiving free over the air television here in the US and in many countries around the world. We've spent a lot of time talking about how the broadcasters are encrypting these signals to make it difficult for people to receive them. So much so that they started encrypting things before the decryption has been fully baked. Another area that hasn't been fully baked yet is emergency alerts. And that's what we're going to focus in on today, thanks to a recent filing I found at the Federal Communications Commission. Let's get to it. So the other day I was browsing through the docket for the ATSC 3.0 transition. And in there, I found this recent filing from a group called the AWARN Alliance. And if you are not familiar with them, they are an organization that is trying to standardize how emergency alerts look, how they are sent out, how they are formatted to develop some consistency across the country and across the industry to make sure that if somebody gets an alert, no matter where they are in the country, it's the same as it would be anywhere else. So people can get life-saving information and get to safety if there is some kind of emergency that they need to respond to. And they've been a big part of the ATSC 3.0 standard development. A lot of the technological parts that are already in place were due to the work that AWARN did. Now, the membership of AWARN consists of a number of broadcasters and some hardware manufacturers, notably LG Electronics and their uh, subsidiary Zenith, who were really the foundation of the uh, broadcast standard are on the list here. So that is why uh, they are so intertwined with everything. Additionally, you'll see the ATSC is an associate member along with their PR uh, person there, Arlen Communications. So they are very much uh, engaged with the industry, or at least they were. And in addition to the industry, they also have very close ties to governmental agencies. And of course, each of these agencies is responsible for notifying the public when there are threats to public safety going on, which is why, of course, having the standards set is really important. And in the FCC filing that I referenced earlier, John Lawson, who's the executive director of AWARN, sent along a cover letter uh, with the presentation that we'll step through in a minute. And he expressed some frustration here that the FCC uh, needs to provide leadership on the issue of emergency alerts. And he wants the whole notion of alerting to be a priority in the future of television initiative. And he feels as though there needs to be more work on the government side to make all of this happen. I did reach out to Mr. Lawson and I heard back right before I started shooting this video because it sounded like they were a little frustrated with everybody at the moment. And his response was that several major broadcast companies highlighted advanced alerting as the key benefit of Next Gen TV when they filed comments requesting that the commission approve voluntary transmission in ATSC 3.0. That's what we're doing right now, the voluntary transmission part. Chairman Pai, who was the chairman of the FCC at the time, thanked him personally for the role of AWARN in getting him the three votes he needed for approval. But Sinclair and Capital Broadcasting are really the only two broadcast companies making investments in advance alerting since then. This inertia has been exacerbated by a lack of leadership on the issue from the FCC. So it sounds like at the moment, nobody's really taking the mantle of leadership on this really important issue. One could argue that this is the most important part of the ATSC 3.0 rollout because it has the potential to dramatically improve alerting and give people much more granular information about how to keep themselves safe. So hopefully uh, this letter and the presentation that they sent along with it will get people moving. Now, right now in many markets, if your cell phone is getting alerts, you're not seeing those alerts on the ATSC 3.0 broadcast. Uh, this YouTuber, WNY Over the Air, put up a video where he was getting alerts on his phone and hearing all the tones going off, but the broadcasters were not putting anything out over the ATSC3 broadcast because there's no standard yet. So that's a concern, and I'm sure the FCC won't transition until it's done, but at this point, nobody's really focused on getting that part of the standard working at the level it needs to. So there's some real-world examples there. Now, the FCC's order that got ATSC3 off the ground in 2017, according to AWARN, prominently focused on the life-saving advancements in emergency alerting that this new technology should provide. And AWARN says that the things that they helped bake into the standard include geo-targeting, so you don't over-alert. So if you've got 
flooding in one section of a city, you don't need to alert everybody to it. You can just get the people affected out of that area and not cause widespread panic. This is also useful in tornadoes and other situations where damage might be more localized. You can include rich media like photos, video, evacuation routes, shelter locations, storm tracks, and because you can geotarget, you can get that information out to people so it's very, very relevant to them individually. And there are, of course, potentials, depending on where you are, for deep indoor and mobile reception, device wake-up capability, where it can actually turn your TV on to warn you if you happen to be asleep. And they also talk a lot about resilience, because remember, cellular networks and power grids are often the first things to go down. And they've provided some slides here in their presentation about what happened in a couple of real-world scenarios. So Hurricane Ian in Florida, uh, you can see a number of cell phone sites went down where the storm came ashore. So those folks could not get those alerts pushed out to their phones. At the same time, though, there were 20 TV stations serving that market, and only five of them were knocked out. So if you have consistent emergency broadcasts going out on all 20 of those stations, even if a couple of them go down, that information is getting to people for advanced alerting. And that is why uh, it's so important to maintain broadcast TV, in my humble opinion. Here's another example from New Orleans, where they had very widespread cellular disruption, but only two out of the 17 TV stations in that area were knocked off the air. And Awarn also mentions that the current alert system for cellular phones, while it can be widespread, isn't effective because it doesn't provide much information. There's a limit to how many characters can be sent out currently. And they've also done some studies to show that the alerts result in milling, where people take more time than they should before taking action because there's not enough information for them to act upon. And of course, if the cell towers are down or disconnected from each other, you're not getting those alerts anyhow. Now, what might these ATSC3 alerts look like? Well, they do have an example up on their website where you will get a very clear warning about what's going on. You can click on more information to get some details here. And then presumably you would have this information geocoded to your location where it tells you where the shelter location is. You can pull up a map that gets sent down to your television to show you where to go. And you can also get information on additional shelters if you need it. Interestingly, they also provide an example of what this mobile alert would look like on a smartphone, which of course the broadcasters are not currently allowing us to stream their broadcasts to at the moment due to the encryption. But you can see you could have a much more enhanced alert here that goes beyond just that one little partial text message that we received now. Now, another important point raised in the AWARN presentation to the FCC is that people who can't afford a streaming service or a cell phone are going to be at greater risk because they're not going to be able to receive this information. And one of the things that we've talked about frequently on this channel in regards to this new TV standard is that the broadcasters are encrypting the signals to make it harder for people to view TV the way they want. The reason is, is that they want you paying a cable or streaming provider a broadcast fee to watch those TV channels because that's how they make a bulk of their money now. They don't make as much off of advertising like they used to. And that does create some disparities here. Now, one thing Awarn is suggesting is that perhaps a small battery-powered receiver like this might be a good way for people who don't have a television or any other means to get emergency information to stay informed because they will be able to, on a cheap device like this, have a small screen that they can interact with and get the same data delivered to that device over the ATSC3 television signals, even if they don't have a TV that can receive them. And that might work in areas where you have a decent signal indoors. So that might be something good to come out of this discussion. They also referenced a couple of set-top boxes as well. So the ADTH box that we reviewed a few months ago is referenced here as capable of delivering these alerts, but isn't able to do so at the moment because nobody's sending them out. Uh, the Zinwell also, which we reviewed a couple of months ago, has a battery backup on board. And it's interesting because I did see that referenced on the box when it came in, that there was a lithium ion battery, but there was nothing to really show me that there was any use for that battery, but apparently it's in there as a backup so that these emergency alerts could get through even if the power is out, although your television would need to have power too, I would imagine, but still that's built in 
to the Zinwell, and perhaps we'll see other devices with other emergency options available. So Awarn says the takeaway from some of the roundtables they did a couple of years ago is that there's a clear use case here for what the potential is for emergency information with ATSC3. Local stations do want to provide this information to people because it does help make the case for continuing over the air broadcasts. But even years ago, they were saying they need more national leadership to define the templates and how this looks and how we're going to adopt it. And so that's kind of where we are at right now. And you can see here on this slide, they're asking for some specific things that have to get put in motion so that we have a standard for emergency alerts. The technology is there, it's baked in, but nobody's agreeing on how it needs to get put together uniformly so that people get life-saving information when this transition occurs, if it ever occurs. So another issue here with ATSC3. Now, in fairness, they are thinking about this at the standard body level here. So just the other day, the ATSC did have an emergency information simulation where they were rolling out these portable racks of equipment that can broadcast a full ATSC3 signal along with the emergency alert information. But AWARN was not mentioned in this press release, nor was there any real agreement on what the standard should be for how these alerts are made. So the bottom line here is that ATSC3 has the potential to provide dramatically improved emergency communications in this country, but also all the other countries that are looking to roll out this standard for broadcast TV as well. Unfortunately, the broadcasters in this country put a priority on their bottom line by encrypting the signals before they started working on the emergency part of the standard, and the FCC hasn't pushed the broadcasters to do that either. So hopefully this work that AWARN is doing to get the FCC motivated to address this issue will result in a better emergency system. But right now, like the rest of the standard, a lot of things are in flux. I'll be keeping an eye on developments with ATSC3. Let me know what you thought down in the comments section. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.